Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to this Essential Guide to MIDI in Cubase. MIDI is a vast subject and it's probably one of the two fundamental components of any DAW setup. MIDI and audio together give us a song. Really, what is it? How does it allow us to connect all of our various pieces of equipment together? And what are the various functions of all of the components inside it? If that sounds interesting to you, check out the Patreon and YouTube member links below. Fantastic way to help support me. This is what I do for a living these days. The first thing that we want to do is head into our studio menu and select studio setup. I'm going to talk about the options in this MIDI port setup dialog. This basically details the hardware that's currently connected to my computer. Now, at the moment, the Native Instruments Complete keyboard is the only device that's actually on. I've got another couple that I'm going to turn on over the course of this video. But as you can see, basically all that's listed here are my audio interface, the Focusrite USB MIDI, and my complete control keyboard. And there are three entries for the in section and also three entries for the out section for the complete control. So that's the vast majority of what's going on here. So for the moment, we're going to ignore all of the entries that don't say complete control. The Native Instruments control keyboard gives me a really good kind of test environment in which to discuss this stuff because we've got three inputs and three outputs and we need to understand why. Well, one of them called complete control dash one is the primary mechanism by which the physical hardware of the keyboard talks to my computer. That's called a port, a MIDI port. Imagine a port like a communications pipe and inside this big thick pipe, you've got 16 individual cables. Those cables are called MIDI channels. Every MIDI port is one way. So there's a one way communication from the keyboard to my computer. That's the pipe that's currently highlighted. This complete control dash one input is the big MIDI port that's basically feeding out of the, out of the keyboard into the computer. But the computer also wants to be able to talk to the keyboard. And so we need an outgoing MIDI port, which is this one. So this is from the computer, this big pipe that's got 16 individual cables and that MIDI, that, that MIDI port travels into the keyboard and is able to basically feed information from the computer to the keyboard to maybe update some of its parameters in real time. So each one of those MIDI ports is completely independent. And this is a really important thing to understand about MIDI. Every single MIDI channel on every single MIDI port is only either ever input or output. There are no two-way MIDI communications channels anywhere. And so everything that you see in MIDI config is almost always doubled. There's inputs and outputs. The next entry in the list for both input and output in this particular case is this complete control EXT-1. Now I don't use these two MIDI ports in my system at all. And as you can see, I've set the visibility flag to, to, to off because I don't want to see them in my setup. These are physical jacks on the back of the keyboard that are capable of connecting to other pieces of hardware. So let's say this keyboard wants to have maybe a slave synthesizer module, but by having visibility of those ports inside Cubase, it basically means that Cubase can send information as if it was coming out of the keyboard to that port and so that maybe the computer could talk directly to this other hardware module. But as I say, I don't have anything physically connected to those ports. I'm not interested in any communication to or from them. And so I'm gonna set their visibility flag to off. Don't wanna see them, not interested in them. The next entry down, DAW, and again, we've got an input and output version of these are for system messages between the computer and the keyboard. So for instance, my complete control has got uh, a, play, a play button. If I press play, you can see just down below the sequence has started playing, press stop, I can press record, and it'll start recording. All of those features are enabled via the MIDI communications protocol. And so they need their own MIDI ports and the computer and the keyboard have a two-way conversation via two different ports in order to basically accomplish all of those features. So for instance, when I press record, the light on my keyboard lights up. That's an example of the two-way correspondence between the computer and the keyboard. The keyboard sends a message to the computer. The computer says, yes, okay, I am now engaged in record mode. It sends information back to the keyboard, say you can now turn your light on. 
and the keyboard does that thing. So this two-way communication protocol is completely independent of any note data that I'm pressing on the keyboard. I don't want those two things to get confused at all. And so we have totally separate communications channels down which uh, both of those pieces of information pass. But they're independent to such an extent that I've renamed them on my computer. These show as columns are all renameable, call them whatever you want. And anything that's effectively hands off, as far as I'm concerned, I put the word system in brackets just to remind me if I'm in Cubase and using this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, don't mess with the system channels. They're basically reserved for these kind of behind the scenes communications. Now, unfortunately, I can't make them invisible. I would like to just not see them anywhere in my system at all, but I can't do that. If I set the visibility flag to false, it's gonna disable the port and Cubase needs that port in order to be able to communicate with the device. At this point, I think it's worth jumping out of this uh, dialogue for a moment. We'll come back in a moment. I'm gonna show you a physical real world example of this stuff in use. So I've got a, an instance of Halion Sonic SE loaded here. And at the moment, I've got no means of communicating with this plugin. I have no MIDI input. Well, I'm gonna select one. If I head to the MIDI inputs box here, you can see input routing. These are all the available options. And I want to choose my keyboard. I want to play notes on the keyboard and hear it played in this plugin. So I choose complete control in. You can see that the door option is available, but I'm not gonna select it because it's marked as a system flag. And the third port, the external port that I have no interest in at all, isn't visible because I unticked that visibility flag. So I'm gonna select complete control in. And now when I press a key on the keyboard, you hear the sound come out of the Halion Sonic SE plugin. So let's just have a review of what's happened. I've pressed a key on the keyboard and the MIDI message has traveled down a particular port called complete control in. It's reached Cubase on the selected track. This is the record arm track. So this is basically the track that's active at the moment. That track contains an instance of a plugin, the Halion Sonic SE. Now remember earlier when I said ports are pipes down which 16 individual cables travel. Well, this particular piece of information is traveling down MIDI channel one. On the left hand side of Sonic SE, you can see here are the 16 MIDI channels. They're all on the same MIDI port. Sonic SE only has a single input MIDI port. This is it. These are the 16 channels of it. And on channel one, we have a piano loaded, but we can use this track to communicate on a different channel. This little number underneath the plugin name allows me to set a different MIDI channel. Let's set it to MIDI channel two. You can see that I've got a marimba loaded on channel two. So now when I press a key on the keyboard, you hear the marimba. At the moment, this track is communicating on MIDI channel two on the Halion Sonic SE output port. In other words, it's sending the information to the Halion Sonic plugin and it has a MIDI port open via which it's receiving that information. And it's basically playing the spacious marimba because we're talking on channel two. Okay, let's leave that there for the moment and head back to our MIDI port setup dialog. What I'm gonna do now is turn a new piece of equipment on. So I've just turned on the Native Instruments machine, which is sat right next to my keyboard. I like Native Instruments stuff and new stuff has appeared in the MIDI port setup box. We've now got two new entries on the inputs and two equivalent entries on the outputs, and you can see a very close equivalence. We've got the machine controls themselves, machine mark three in, machine mark three out. So they're the primary means by which if I hit something on this machine, if I press one of the pads, that's gonna send information into Cubase and potentially back out. And we've also got these external ports, which once again, I've not got anything physically connected to my native instruments machine. So I'm not interested in those ports and I've disabled them. Now we can head back over to our Sonic SE track. And instead of receiving MIDI data from the complete control keyboard, I'm gonna to change to take data from my machine instead. And now when I press pads on the machine, so there's like a four by four grid here which allows me to do 
<laughs> kind of really quite Frank Zappa-esque sort of stuff. So now this track is communicating via different MIDI ports. The incoming port to the track is connected to the outgoing port of the machine. And the outgoing port of the track is still connected to the same instance of the same plugin and we're still hearing the marimba. If I switch that back to channel two, now the machine controller is gonna control the piano instance on channel one. Here we are back in the MIDI port setup dialog again. Now we wanna have a talk about this column called all MIDI input. You can see that I've got two boxes selected. I've got the complete control and I've got my machine mark three. What that allows me to do is say, I don't particularly care which of those devices talk to the Sonic SE instance, I want to be able to hear both of them. So now if I set the input routing to all MIDI inputs, I'm gonna press some pads on my machine, or play some notes on my keyboard. So what Cubase is basically doing behind the scenes here, it's got all of these channels, communications channels open all of the time. Both of these ports from the machine and the complete are connected into Cubase and they are live and active permanently. As far as this track's concerned, by setting all MIDI inputs on, it's saying both of those pipes are feeding into the same track at the same time. I can press the same note, I've just pressed a C on machine, C on complete, press them both at the same time and both of those pieces of information are getting into the same plugin at the same time. But that's merely a function of this all MIDI inputs routing enabling that kind of multi-way conversation. Fundamentally, the, the complete keyboard is still communicating on one channel of one port, the complete in channel. And similarly, the machine is also communicating on a single channel on a single port. I'll just make very quick mention of these checkboxes underneath the port setup. We don't really ever need to worry about them, to be absolutely honest with you. The manual advises you to turn on this use system timestamp option if you're having, a, I think it's persistent timing issues. Now I've never had Cubase go out of sync with my system clock, so I don't know under what circumstances you would need to engage that. But if you have any timing issues with the play, playback of your MIDI, then try that option. Turn direct music on if you want to use the Windows direct music drivers. I don't, but if you turn it on, it'll basically reconfigure this port setup. I'll do it quickly. See, it rescans all of the ports and basically uh, switches to direct music. But as you can see, my default is Windows MIDI, and this stands for Windows Runtime MIDI API. This is something for uh, making Bluetooth connections, I believe. It's not something I've ever used, so I won't pretend to speak with any authority on it. Now I want to show you a quick example of using multiple MIDI channels on the same port simultaneously. And in order to do this, I'm actually going to import a MIDI file. If I, if I head into the file menu, import MIDI file. I don't want to create a new project. I'm just going to load the tracks into this existing project. And I've downloaded this MIDI file from midiworld.com. Check them out. Um, it's a public domain download but I like to give credit where I'm using other people's stuff so I'll get this going and just sail away into a completely serene blissful state and you can see that it's operating communicating on channels 4, 5 and 6. If I open the instance of Halion that's playing this music you can see that at the moment 4, 5 and 6 are all set to grand piano but because the note information that's heading into them into these channels is independent, I can change those instruments to whatever I want. So I'll put a marimba for the main melody line. And channel six is the bass notes. is receiving all of that note information into the same plugin. It's all operating on the same port. 
but because it's communicating down different MIDI channels, it's able to route that information to different instruments loaded inside each of those, basically, channel slots. Oh, absolutely magnificent piece of music. Finally, we can have dedicated system devices as well. Turn my final piece of hardware on. So this is the Steinberg CC121, which is a DAW controller. I don't use this for MIDI input at all. It's purely a system input device. And so now you can see Steinberg CC121 system for both input and outputs. Oops. And even though I have to leave it in the visible state again because it's an active port, it's in direct communication with my, uh, with my system, I don't want to ever use it. So it is available for selection in my all MIDI inputs. Here it is, but I know to ignore it. And the examples of the stuff that the 121 can do is stuff like turning on monitoring over here, um, enable read and write automation, open the instance of the plugin manually. So basically I've got individual dedicated buttons for all of those things that needs a MIDI port. The CC121 needs to communicate with Cubase on a MIDI port. That's how it does it. That'll do us for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you did. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.